up, doll collectors, hobbyists, fabs, and besties. I'm Toya, an adult doll collector. Welcome to my miniverse. So I was making the printable for the socks. You know, those right there. And I was like, we need way more stuff on this printable. So we are going to make one of my new favorite things, a blanket hoodie. I already did a test run. It wasn't great, but I think I know how to fix it. So let's go. I'm using some fuzzy shorts from Five Below, but of course you can always buy fabric by the yard from your fabric store if you like. I made a rough pattern that I'm tracing onto the paper and making a few adjustments. Done. And there's the socks. I made a copy so we can cut it out. I took the shorts apart for the fabric. I fold it in half long ways and then fold it in half again. Place the pattern on top so the word fold is at the two folds and cut it out. If you're worried about the fabric shifting, you can always take this pattern, place it on a piece of paper and draw the other side. So you only have to worry about the top fold. For the hood, I cut one full size piece, then fold on the line and cut the front. For the pocket, you can cut two to line it or just one if you wish to hem it. For the cuffs, I use a sock and I make sure each piece is cut on a fold. I'm not great with this fabric because it is so stretchy, so I'm going to sew a lot of it by hand. I'm starting with the ears, which are optional, and we're gonna place it good side to good side. Each ear needs two cutouts, then sew a straight stitch around the curve. Turn it inside out and repeat to make two. Take the two semicircles for the hood Match up the curves, good side to good side. Place the ears upside down between the two layers. I use pins to hold everything in place. Sew a straight stitch along the curve, making sure those ears are secure. Trim off the excess, then we can flip it to take a look. One ear is larger than the other, but that just makes it special. And they're probably too far apart, <laughs> but we're gonna keep going. I take some leftover sock from making our reading socks. I'm going to use it to line the opening of the hood. However, you can always just choose to turn it under and hem. I'm taking the sock and I'm going to line it up with the raw edge, going across the opening of the hood, sew them together, flip it over the edge to the other side, then sew along the edge to hold it in place. And now we have a fuzzy edge to our hoodie. For the pocket, if you cut two, you sew them together like a pillow and flip it. But I'm going to add a fuzzy edge across the top, just like we did on the hood. Then I fold over and hem the sides. Then take the body of the hoodie and sew the pocket onto the front. And we went with a little kangaroo pocket. Take the folded over sock pieces and line them up with the raw edge of the sleeves and we're gonna stretch it across, then sew it down using a back stitch where we go through the fabric, pull the thread, then go back in right before the last stitch. Pull the thread, then go forward, and then go back to keep a little stretch. Let's attach the hood, take the bottom hemmed edge, and we're going to line it up with the center and sew it on using a back stitch. Keep in mind, sewing by hand does take a little bit of time and this pattern is not perfect, but it is free. Depending on how large you cut the opening for the neck, your hood may or may not cross in the front. Mine didn't cross, they just met. However, I did add that layer of fluff onto the end. But let's take a look. Oh, so far that looks kind of cute. Now we just have to sew up the sides. So I'm going to place it so the good side is on the inside, match up those raw edges from the sleeve to the bottom and sew a straight stitch. Once both sides have been sewn, fold over and hem the bottom. Once sewn, flip it right side out to make an oversized blanket hoodie in miniature for the dolls. 
They can curl up and put their feet inside and be extra cozy while watching my froggy stuff on YouTube. I absolutely love this. She looks so comfy. However, sewing by hand, this did take all day. This fabric is super soft, but it wasn't the easiest for me to work with. However, you may be a pro and have a completely different experience. That is just mine. But those ears are so cute. Now that she's cozy, she needs some coffee. So let's check out MGA's Miniverse Make It Mini appliances. I ordered them from lolsurprise.com. They were $12.99 each. I was happy to buy them online because I haven't seen them in stores. However, but the packaging totally lets you know which appliance is inside. We can see the espresso machine here. It does say there are two styles, so we don't know the color, but we know that we're getting one of them. This one says milk tea, two styles. But when I ordered online, I couldn't choose. I had to hope I got one that I wanted, and I did. This capsule is pretty large. Not loving that the price keeps inching up, and everything for some reason comes in a round capsule. <gasps> I got the one I wanted! It's pretty large. The top can come off. There's a little bottle, so I guess this is where you would pour the resin or slime or whatever they're using for this series. And this opens to let it out. This is removable. It's too tall for my kitchen. In the capsule, we also got a little card that looks like a sign, a small package, with the mini booklets containing the do's and don'ts of working with resin, a collector's guide with the recipes, then we have these, one has spoons, the resin for the coffee, and a little container of whipped cream. Oops. In the other one, we have two large cups, which are kind of like those soup cups for a Barbie, or just a really large coffee cup. On this cup, the inside is white, the outside is painted. We do have some, you know, little imperfections on the cup. And we have two matching plates to be the saucers for the cups. Compared to a Barbie, I think the scale is a little large, but totally doable. I like the dishes and the little accessories we get with the Make It Mini capsules. However, resin play really isn't my vibe. And pouring it in a machine to have it come out the bottom sounds like more of a mess than I'm willing to do. Sorry. But we're gonna take some recycled paper, cut it into thin strips. I cut mine a little less than half an inch, roll it around a needle or a straightened paper clip, gluing on more layers of paper until it can fit the cup. Take craft paint, and paint it, add a little Mod Podge for shine. We can mix in a little paint if you want to tint the Mod Podge, and we can add the whipped cream if we like. Then allow it to dry. While waiting, we did make our 2024 doll calendar with a photo of Summer and Nigel edited by Barbie Model Mayhem on Instagram. We have a human-sized calendar that you can print off our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. They are free to download, and we made a doll-sized calendar as well, with a little mini romance novel at the bottom and a poster. This calendar is easy to make. We can make it the same way we did last year. Just cut out all the parts, glue the back onto cardstock or recycled paperboard, cut it out, stack the calendar pages in order, run a glue stick across the top, making sure a little bit of glue gets in between the top pages, press and hold until dried, then glue the stack of pages onto the back to make a mini calendar with tear away pages. For the poster, we just need to cut it out but we can glue it onto cardstock or paperboard to make it sturdier if you like, or glue it onto leftovers from the printable, which is what I chose to do. I added two layers and it's pretty sturdy. For the mini book, cut out the cover, the template, and the faux pages. Glue the template onto craft foam or layers of cardstock or paperboard, cut it out and glue it into the cover, add the faux pages, gluing one side to the craft foam and the other to the cover to make a quick little paperback book. Depending on your craft foam, there might be a little bit of space, but overall, I think it works. 
And this was super fast to make. As far as books go, our glue is now dry so we can place the coffee in the cup. This is a vibe. If you made the coffee insert small enough, it can be removable. So you can switch them out whenever you like. This is an idea we came up with a while back in a hot cocoa video. We do have a pouch on our blanket hoodie. And I've been seeing people put their pets in the pouch and walk around. I found cats on Amazon. They were $11.99 for 12 miniature cats. Aww. They're all thrown in the box together. Unfortunately, some paint has transferred from one cat to another. And it's on the two I really wanted. But we might be able to touch that up later with a little paint. There's supposed to be 12 cats, so let's count. Here's one. Here is cat two. Three. Cat four. Cat five. Cat six. Cat seven. Cat eight. Cat nine. Cat 10, 11, and 12. And they look like a pretty good size for the dollhouse. But before they get too comfortable, let's just downsize a little. But I think I might go with the hairless cat. And now Minnie Toya is cozy with her coffee and her cat. Overall, I like the idea of the Maked Mini appliances. And I like that we can tell which item is inside. Personally, I think I like the dishes most of all. The blanket hoodie is a new favorite. However, it did take a while to sew by hand. $11.99 for 12 cats means we're paying about 99 cents per cat. I think they might be fun to add to our doll photography. Thank you for joining us for a cozy coffee cat kind of day. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell. And follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff, the Frog Vlog, and Bella of My Froggy Stuff. And we will see you next time. Bye!